Savior. There is no other name. Creation testifies, the angels stand in awe. To hear the saints declaring the greatness of our
Memorial Day service being Memorial Day of course tomorrow and as you can see we're kind of a little bit patriotic around here and uh, we love our military all of the men and women that have fought for our country down through the years and even are fighting now on foreign fields around the world and we praise God for them and we thank God for the new force space force the sixth branch of our military. Amen. We're proud of them. Tomorrow's their day. Let's remember them and honor them and pray for them, for all of them and those of them, if you would please. And then also next Sunday, we will also be recognizing, we're going to leave up our military and all of our patriotic stuff because next Sunday is the 77th anniversary of D-Day, of the invasion of Normandy. June the 6th, 1944, we invaded Normandy beaches, Omaha, Utah, and gold to liberate France and to liberate, liberate Europe from Nazism, from fascists, from communists, from Adolf Hitler. That will be next Sunday. It will be June the 6th, 1944. Some of our fathers fought in that campaign. My dad was in the Pacific fighting the Japanese. Carol's dad was heading up the spearhead across Europe under General Patton's Third Army, Fourth Armored Division. 
and he was involved in five major battle campaigns. Battle of the Bulge, Bastogne, the Ardennes, some of those battles. And so, decorated soldier, both my dad and her dad were blessed to come home. So anyway, praise the Lord. So that's next Sunday, June the 6th, 1944. The invasion of D-Day. By the way, on those four beaches, we lost 10,000 men that day. It was costly. Freedom cost. And you're going to see that in the video in just a few minutes. It's a brand new video. We want everybody to watch it. It's one of the most powerful videos. And I would suggest get your hankies out. Because it's a tearjerker. But I hope that it will deeply cause you to deeply to sense and to feel the pain, the agony of the cost of freedom of the men and women that paid for it. So you're going to see that in just a minute. President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate, of the House of Representatives, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I have today ordered to Vietnam the Air Mobile Division and certain other forces which will raise our fighting strength to 75,000. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. Let us make a vow to our dead. Strengthened by their courage, hardened by their value, and born by their memory, let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died for.
We are a nation under God, and I believe God intended for us to be free. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers bearing crosses or stars of David. Their lives ended in places called Bellow Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Pork Chop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. They add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom.
til søn. All right, and praise the Lord, amen. Well, I trust that uh, you enjoyed that video and that it was a blessing to you and uh, certainly would cause you to think and uh, of those that paid the price for our freedom and the families that have suffered pain and suffering through the loss of their loved one and even the dogs that have lost their trainers. And... Uh, we just thank you so much for that, Carol. Appreciate that so very, very much. When I first saw the video, I sat in her office and watched it and uh, got teary-eyed. And later, I watched it again in my office. And there's just me and the Lord. <laughs> and, uh, uh, man, I just began to bawl and just to thank God as I saw those families and those dear, precious wives laying across those caskets, their husbands, and and of course, you know how I am with dogs. <laughs> I love dogs, and see the dogs lose their 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 trainers, and their buddies, their pals, and the children lose their fathers. Thank you for all of you who've served. I know we have some men and women in here that have served, and if you have served in the military, would you please stand for just a moment, real quickly? If you've worn the uniform of the United States of America, please stand as we give you a round of applause. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you men. Some of them served in wars and some in peacetime. Doesn't matter. They wore the uniform. And we thank God for that. Well, we're talking about Memorial Day today, so let me encourage you to take your Bibles and open them to the book of Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as we're looking at memorials to remember. Memorials to remember. Let's uh, read and then we'll get into a prayer and get into it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse number 1 through verse 4, we're going to read. Follow along with me. The Apostle Paul, of course, is writing uh, in arguments of defense of the gospel, and he's writing to the church of Corinth, and he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. What is the gospel? The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. How many of you received the gospel today? How many are standing in the gospel today? By which also ye are saved. How's a man saved? By the gospel. Okay? If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now here's his message. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 
and that he was seen of Cephas, and he goes on about the proofs of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Bible assures us that Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day according to the Word of God. And don't let anybody tell you any different. Don't let anybody try to share with you or preach to you another gospel. Because there is only one gospel. And that is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for today. We bless you. We thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. Lord, we thank you for the grace and your mercy upon us. Thank you for the victories we've had through the years. Of, we've paid the price for freedom. Thank you for the price that Jesus paid for our freedom, for our forgiveness of our sin. We were doomed and bound for an eternal hell in our sin, and Jesus came and paid it all for us. And we thank you and we praise you for it. We bless you, Lord. And we ask now you would bless your word, bless this message. Father, as this simple message goes out, that which we preach unto you, that which we have received, and where we stand in the gospel, that men and women and boys and girls might be saved. And so, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for it. Bless our time now in your word, God. Thank you for these men and women that are serving, those that have served, those that have paid the ultimate price, those that have come home crippled and battered and beaten in the loss of limbs. Lord, we bless them, we bless them, and we ask you to bless them and their families. And so, Lord, bless our time now in your word. Father, may you be with your servant in this hour now. Father, we ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, for his power, for his unction, his illumination, the ability to proclaim the truth of God's word. We ask that you would send it out and send it forth across around the world that it will save souls for Jesus' sake. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today, of course, tomorrow being the official day of Memorial Day. Actually, I believe it was the 30th and then became the 31st, the first Monday. But we look into the Bible and we literally find the word memorial some 32 times of which 22 of those memorials God wants us to remember. 22 of them. But we're not going to look at all 22 today. It's okay to say amen. Because I know you're breathing a sigh of relief over that. But we are going to look at one. We're going to look at the greatest memorial that God gave to us. It's called the cross. The greatest memorial that God gave to us that he says, I don't want you to forget it. I want you to remember it as long as you live. Amen. And we find as we look at that today, the word memorial literally has two meanings to it. Depending on where we're using it as an adjective or as a noun. Now if we use it as an adjective, it means, to, it means serving to preserve a remembrance. We're serving today to preserve a remembrance of the cross. If we use it as a noun, it has a little different meaning. It's something that's designed to keep the remembrance alive so that we can share it with all the world. And that's what we want to do today, this morning, in just brief time we have left, is to take to preserve the remembrance of the cross, to keep it alive so we can share it with the world that's watching right now by way of television, radio, internet, YouTube, iPhones, iPads, tablets, and yes, Facebook. Thank God for electronics. In the modern world we have today to use all the tools that God has given to us to share with you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So let's take a look at this memorial, all right? First of all, that he wants us. God wants us to keep the memorial of his son, death, burial, and resurrection alive and to share it with the world. And that's what we're going to do today. We shared it with the world last night. One of the Blessed Assurance series went out last night at 11. Went out this morning at 8.30. It was on the radio, 11 o'clock television last night. 8 o'clock television this morning. 9 o'clock television this morning. And it went out all over this county, went out into 8 million homes across Central Florida, and it was streamed around the world. 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't even know while we're standing here, church, how many people got saved today. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if they heard the word of God this morning, and they heard the gospel which we preached unto them, then they believed, and they were saved. Oh, praise the Lord. So let's take a look at, first of all, a lot of scripture. We're just going to make some mention of it, and then we'll uh, dismiss. First of all, I want you to notice we're going to talk about the greatest memorial, his cross. His cross, that's why we're not taking it down off of our steeple. That's, not, we're not, that's why we're not taking it down out of our baptistry and up here on the walls. Okay? We believe in the cross and the message of a cross. It's a memorial that God wants us to remember. He wants us to preserve it, and he wants us to keep it alive so we can tell the world. But you see, the modern contemporary, contemporary progressive churches tells us to take it down. Take the crosses out of your church. Take them off your steeple. Take them down because they're an offense. That's exactly right. The Bible says it will be an offense. And so we're not taking them down. It's a memorial that God wants us to keep and preserve and to keep it alive. So let's, let's read some verses about the cross here. Follow along with me. For Christ, now this is Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, and this is one of my favorite passages or the favorite first part of it. <laughs> For Christ sent me not to baptize. God didn't call this preacher to baptize, but he called me to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The lost man thinks today that what I'm doing standing up here, preaching to all you people and getting loud, is foolishness. But to those of us that have been saved by that message of gospel, it is the power of God unto salvation. 1 Corinthians 1, 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. I like this part. So it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So this foolishness that I'm doing up here, most of you got saved that way. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Amen. Paul, writing to the church of Colossae, says, And having made peace... Now he's talking to the believers there, how they made peace, how they made peace, how church, through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. If you're saved today, you made peace with God through the blood of the cross of Jesus. That's why we're going to preserve it, to keep it alive and remember it, so we can tell the world that they can be saved, have their sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, we have a bloody gospel. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of forgiveness of sin. We're saved by the blood of the Lamb. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. There's power in the blood, cleansing power in the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for His cross. Paul writing again to the church of Colossae in chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And you, being dead in your sins, you can say now if you're saved, say, that was me. See, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. And, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he hath quickened, that means you've been made alive by the Spirit of God, together with him, with Christ, having forgiven all your trespasses. Does that describe anybody here today? Anybody here today were dead in your sins and now you've been, been alive, made alive in Christ, you've been quickened? How about, does that describe you today? And that God, Jesus, has forgiven you all of your trespasses? Praise the Lord. Why? Because of his cross. See, that's why we're going to keep it alive. That's why we're going to remember it. You see, and that's why we're going to tell the world. Amen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailing it to his cross, church. 
That's your sin and my sin and my transgressions and my everything, lawlessness, iniquity, and everything, and you name it. Jesus, God the Father, took all of my rotten, black, dirty, filthy, stinking, rotten sin, and he took it and he nailed it to his cross. And when the hammer came down and the nails went into the hands and the feet of God, God took my sin and nailed it to his son. Hallelujah. I'm not going to forget that. We have forgotten sometimes where we've come from. We've forgotten our roots. We've forgotten our history. So thank God, church, for the cross. It's a memorial. Now, I know you have some of them in your house and your pictures, and you have them on your neck that you wear. That's fine. It's wonderful. Just make sure they're bare. He's not on it anymore. Okay? That's, that's over. And I'm sure he's sitting up in glory and saying, thank God it's over. Amen? But it's a memorial. It's a testimony. Somebody asks you if you wear one and asks you, here's a great opportunity to witness. Ma'am, why, or sir, why do you wear that cross around your neck? Because, you see, it's one of God's 22 memorials that he wants me to preserve, to keep alive, so that I can tell you how to get saved. Because it's what was done and accomplished on the cross that saved me. Now, let me tell you how that happened. Witness. Well, not only his cross, but something happened on that cross. His death. There are those today that believe Jesus never died. There are those that believe the swoon theory, it's called. Well, he was taken down off the cross, and he was carried, and he was put in this nice, cool, damp tomb for three days, and it revived him. Now, with anybody got any kind of sense up here at all, called a brain, that if you think what Jesus went through, and we have history to document that, we have the first century Jewish writers, we have everybody that wrote about what happened to him, of the cruel torture that he went through, any normal man would have died under the whipping of the cat and nine tails. Would have totally died at that, any normal man. But you see, he wasn't to die at the hands of the Romans. He was to die when he said, it is finished. But any normal man would have died under that. Then they would have died trying to carry that cross all the way down to Via Della Rosa to get to Calvary. They'd have died when the, when the spikes went into his hands, his wrists, and into his feet. And when they jabbed a spear into his side and punctured the heart and all of that, and water and blood came forth. Don't tell me that he put him in a wet grave and he revived. I'm telling you, he was stone dead. Jesus died, but he died when he wanted to. Because he said, I lay down my life freely. No man taketh it from me, but I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to raise it up again. And when he stood there that day, and he hung there that day, and he said, tell us to I. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And into my hands I commend my spirit. It is finished. To tell us die, it is finished. And the price of salvation was paid in full. His death was real. 1 Corinthians 15:3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Are you with me on this, church? Romans 5, 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love that word commendeth means god proved god demonstrated his love and that while you and i church were still sinners christ died for us praise the lord first corinthians eleven twenty six. even in the lord's supper we're instructed for as often as you eat this bread by the way the lord's supper is another memorial that we're to keep alive and to remember and to tell the world. And drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Now, he couldn't have come if there wasn't a resurrection. 
Amen. You say, man, Pastor, this is a simple salvation ABCs. That's right. Because you see, there's a world out there that's lost without Christ. There's a world out there that needs to be saved. Now, you can join all the churches you want to. You can join all the denominations you want to. You can put any name and flag you want on it. You can go through all the rituals, all the ceremonials, all the classes, sign this, do this, graduate from this, whatever you want. And you can be the most religious, devout, religious person in the world and die lost in your sin without Christ. Do you know that it wouldn't matter if you studied this book and got four or five PhDs in it and you learned to memorize it? And there are those that have memorized it. And you memorize, and you memorize the whole Word of God and you could quote it word by word and phrase by phrase. You could still die lost in your sin without Christ. It doesn't matter how intellectual you are. It doesn't matter how much Scripture you can quote. It doesn't matter how much you know. But do you know Him? And does He know you? You see, that's the important part. You see, God's not interested in how smart you are, how intelligent you are. What He's interested in is what you, you have you done with my son, Jesus. You could be the smartest tack in the world in religion and write theologians and write commentaries and everything else and still die lost without Christ coming to the terms with it oh my so we have his cross we have his death well if we have a death we have to have a burial amen now you don't like the big expositional on this 1 Corinthians 15 4 a and he was buried I don't have to write a theologian book on that I don't have to have a Greek scholar on that. I don't have to have a Greek <laughs> PhD in Greek or Hebrew to understand simple black and white language. And he was buried. That's what you do when someone dies, you bury them. We have enough scripture writing on that in first century writers and so forth, Job Thesis and others that wrote about all that happened in the early church and what took place that they were there. And, and we have the word of God that tells us when Jesus bowed his head and died, he died. And they came and took him off of that cross and they took him to the tomb of Jovus Armathia. And by the way, Nicodemus was part of that group, the burial group. You mean that religious man? You mean that devout Hebrew? You mean that Pharisee? Do you mean that ruler of his people in John chapter 3 that came to Jesus and said, Master, there's no man could do what you do except he be from God. Well, if I'd have been Jesus right then, I'd have said, you got that right, brother. Just for your information, Nick, I am God. Come on, talk to me. Can you imagine Nicodemus got to have a personal one-on-one conversation with God? And he started, and Jesus turned that conversation around immediately, and he focused, and he said his, he focused on his spiritual need, not his religious need. And he said, Nicodemus, ye must be born again. Told him again, marvel not, I say unto thee, you must be born again. He told him again. Call it the triads, the triplets in the Bible. Nick didn't get it. So Jesus finally had to get to John 3:15, 16, 17, and 18 and explain to him, well, let me put it to you this way, Nick. Since you're having a little hard time of understanding of this thing of spiritual birth and being born again, let me put it to you this way. For God so loved you, Nicodemus, that he gave his only begotten son. Nicodemus, that's me whom you're talking to. That whosoever, that's you, Nicodemus, that if you will believe in me, Nicodemus, that's me, you shall not perish, Nick, but have everlasting life. For God sent me not into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Well, Nicodemus got saved. That very devout religious man, he was involved in the burial procession of Jesus. So if anybody can testify that Jesus was dead, Nicodemus can. Because just earlier, prior to that, I was talking to him face to face. And he told me I had to be born again. And a matter of fact, he told me three times. 
And I struggled with that until he explained it a little bit clearer in John 3, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And the light turned on. So he was buried. Now, folks, listen to me. If that's all and it ended right there, we would be, of most men and women, miserable because we would not have the gospel. We would not have salvation because all of that hinged on the fact that he said, I have the power to raise it up. He said, and you destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. And on Easter Sunday morning, he said, oh, don't use that word Easter. Why not? It's in the book of Acts. That Easter Sunday morning, dawn early, stone was rolled away. Now, it wasn't placed there to keep him in or to keep him out. It didn't matter. He's coming out. And the stone was rolled away. And I love it when Mary and them all showed up looking for him. And they asked, well, whom do you seek? Why do you seek the living among the dead? For he is not here. He is risen just like he said. And I can imagine when they came, the scripture indicates and implies that the angel was sitting on the stone. Probably had his leg crossed. and Well, good morning, ladies. What can I do for you? He's not here. What you mean he's not, he's not here? Well, no, we, we watched him bury him three days ago. I'm telling you, gals, he's not here. Go on, take a look inside. He's not here. Now go run and quickly and tell his disciples that he's not here. He's risen. But there had to be a burial. So thank God Jesus was buried. But then there had to be a resurrection. There had to be a resurrection. Now remember, this is a memorial that we are to serve, to preserve, to keep alive so we can tell the world. And that's what we're trying to do today is tell the world of the greatest memorial that God ever gave to us. Here it is, the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 4. Paul picks it up, the latter part of the verse. And, see, first he said, and he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, according to the Word of God. Acts one twenty two says this, beginning from the baptism of John until that day that he was taken up from us. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? Acts 4 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of, our, of the Lord Jesus, and great peace was upon them all. And by the way, church, because of that great power and witness, of the apostles, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Every one of them died a martyr's death for it. Except for John. They tried to kill him too. But the Lord said, nope, not going to happen. They tried to boil him in oil. I don't know if John bears the scars of that or not. We'll see one day. But it wasn't time. John had more work to do. See, God's never finished with us until our work's finished. And as long as we still got work to do, we're still going to be around. And John had to later be exiled to the Isle of Patmos. There where he spent time where he wrote the wonderful book of the Revelation. Then he went back to Ephesus and delivered those letters to the churches of Asia Minor. He became another prominent leader in the church of Ephesus there. Where John once pastored, where Timothy pastored, where Paul started and established the church. And he died of an old age of about 120. Matter of fact, he was the one that Peter was so worried about. When the Lord was giving them some instructions. Some things they were going to be doing. And, John, and Peter, you know, he's a cleric and loud mouth. And he said, well, hey, Master, Jesus, what about this guy? What's he going to do? 
speaking of John. And Jesus said, Peter, shut up. Don't worry about what he's going to do. You do what I tell you to do. Because if I want no, this, this, if I want him to live until I come again, so be it. Do you realize that if Jesus wanted John to still live, he would still be living today? Physically. But we know he's living today because he's with Jesus. We're going to have a lot of talking to do to these guys when we see them. A lot of questions. But the resurrection. Do you know we have so much proof of the resurrection? That G, do you realize that Jesus was seen by over, in over 15 different places, over 40-day period, in 15 different places, by over 552 different people? Some scholars say as much as 1,500. But all the disciples saw him. Others saw him, women. In other places, over 500 brethren at one time saw him. Proof of the resurrection. Romans 1, 4 says this, And we declare uh, Jesus to be the Son of God, with power according to the Spirit of holiness. How? By the resurrection from the dead. Romans 6, 5, Paul says, For if we have been planted together uh, in, in the likeness of His death, we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Philippians 3, 10 says, That I may know Him, Paul says, and the power of His resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. So I'm telling you, God has given us today the greatest memorial to remember. He's asked us to serve, to preserve, to keep it alive so that we can tell the world about his cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection. And I always like to add, his coming again. Because he's coming again. It's not over yet. See, everybody thinks because, well, he died, he buried, he was crucified, he was buried, he's risen, he ascended, and went back to glory. Okay, so we'll just hang around till we kick off the scene, and maybe we'll be blah, blah, blah. No, no, hey, I kept telling him yesterday, it's not over. I kept telling George and Cindy, they kept saying, no, it's not over yet. And they, they said, what do you mean? I said, oh, there's more to come. And, of course, that was their renewal of their wedding vows. That was on the menu. They didn't know that. We kept that hid from them. And then we had the wonderful privilege to share the gospel. And that was a hard crowd. You're easy to preach to, man. <laughs> I was looking forward to this morning, believe me. And, and we had the privilege to share the gospel. And so we were talking, took some pictures, and, and they were, okay, well, goodbye. I said, oh, it's not over yet. And he looked at me. I said, it's not over yet. There's still yet another surprise. And I kind of listened and heard. And I said, oh, by the way, he's here. He's over there singing. That's him. I said, that's your other surprise. Now I said, now, I don't know if there's any more after that, but that, that much I do know. It's not over yet, church. We have a work to do. We have a job to do. And that is to tell the world about the greatest memorial that God ever gave to us. And that is the message of the cross. And what is that message of the cross? It is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and His soon coming again. For God did not call me to baptize. We will. But He called me to preach. That means to herald a message. And a heralder doesn't her herald it. Time to go out into the square and gather the people around and roll out the king's proclamation and say, Hear ye, hear ye, this day of our Lord, a message that I have to give to you that I have received. How that Christ died for our sins. How he was buried. He rose again on the third day according to the scripture. And I got some good news. It didn't finish there. He's coming back. And he's coming in the clouds of glory. Do you know him today? Finish with this. In Acts chapter 2 beginning verse 31. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ we're talking about his resurrection that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption this Jesus hath God raised up 
whereof we are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, He has shed for, uh, for this which ye know, now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord shall said unto the, my Lord, sit on my right hand. Hallelujah. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, let all the world know, let all America know this morning. Are you listening to me? Oh, I hope you are. That God made Jesus. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? That God hath made the same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, and I hope you're hearing this today. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And if that's your question today, here's what you do. Then Peter said unto them, Then this preacher says unto you, Repent. Repent. Turn to Christ in saving faith. Then follow Him in baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. You see, don't get it out of order now. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's my answer to you today. It's my message today. For I preach unto you that which I have received, the gospel the Yuan Gileon, the good news of the gospel, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That good news of that gospel brings salvation to all men everywhere. As we told the crowd yesterday and shared the gospel with them, and a little different than this, we tr tried to use a little bit of KP's Dad's death. That if there's one thing we do know, death is real. And it knocks on everyone's heart door sooner or later. And you don't know when. That's why you need to be sure today, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if you did die, because death is a reality and people are dying. Do you realize there are 7,000 people die a day in this country? A day. 7,000 people in a 24-hour period, David, in this country step off into eternity. And I dare say the majority of them step off into eternity without Christ. Lost. No time to fool around. I told the crowd yesterday, listen, guys, I don't know when I'm going to die. His dad didn't know when he was going to die. I don't know where I'm going to die. His dad really didn't know where. I don't even know how I'm going to die. But I do know where I'm going when I do die. And you had better know that too. And it could happen today. Doesn't matter how young, how old you are, whether you're healthy, healthier than the healthiest athlete in the world or the sickest person in the world, sooner or later, Death's going to knock at your heart's door, and you will breathe your last breath. You are one heartbeat away from eternity. And what you do with Jesus Christ will determine where you will spend eternity. Not what you do with the church, denomination, faiths, rituals, classes, you name it. Ceremonials, no, no, no. What did you do with the person of Christ? As I told the crowd yesterday, have you confessed with your mouth He's the Lord? Have you confessed that you're a sinner and you've sinned against God and asked Him to forgive you? Have you believed in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for you? He paid your sin debt. He took your place that day on Calvary. Have you called on the name of the Lord? 
Because Acts 4.12 says there's no other name given under heaven and among men whereby we must be saved than at the name of Jesus. You can't call on anybody else's name. It won't do you any good. So have you called on that name? And then the scripture says we must receive him. John 1, 12 says, but as many as received him. And you notice that verse comes after verse 11. You know what verse John 1, 11 says? But he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Here comes the conjunction in the English language, the but. The contrast. But as many as received him. Who's the him? Jesus. To them, that's you and I, gave us the power to become the sons of God and daughters of God. So I ask you today, those of you who are watching, my time's up. Have you confessed with your mouth? Have you believed in your heart? Have you called on the Lord? Have you received him? If you haven't, do so right now. Because the clock is ticking. Where will you spend an eternity? God has given us the greatest memorial in all the world to remember and to keep it alive so we could tell the world how they can be saved. Because that's what Paul said in that second and third verse, that we might be saved. Bow your heads and close your eyes. It's time to go. Let me talk to the television audience for just a moment. Those of you that are watching right now with us, by way of television, internet, YouTube, radio, iPhones, iPads, tablets, whatever it is, whatever you're, however you're listening and watching, what will you do with Jesus? Have you confessed with your mouth? Have you believed in your heart? Have you called on the only name? For God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every tongue, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to the glory of God the Father. Have you called on Him today? Have you received Him? If not, we're going to give you that opportunity right now to do that. For all of you that are watching and listening, by whatever means, and those of you that are here in this auditorium as well, this is the invitation to come to Christ. While you have the time, while you're still breathing. Because we never know when death will knock at our door. Not only that, church, we never know when Jesus is coming. The imminent return of Jesus Christ for the rapture of the church could take place right now. And if you're not saved, you'll miss the trip and you'll miss the journey. So let me help you as we tried to help the crowd yesterday. Pray with me. I want you to remember it's not the prayer that saves you. Those are words communicating with God. That's what we're going to do. What saves you is putting your faith and trust in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work on His cross, His memorial for you. So let's pray. Simply pray this with me. We're going to confess with our mouth. That's what the Scripture says in Romans 10, 9. Yes, confess. I confess with my mouth. Dear God, You are the Lord from heaven. I confess that I'm a sinner, God, and I've sinned against you in heaven. And I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me. He will, my friend, he will. I do now believe, there's faith, there's trust, in my heart that Jesus died on the cross just for me. He paid my sin debt. He took my place. I now believe he was buried, and I believe that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and so right now by faith i call upon you lord jesus and receive you into my heart and life to be my lord and my savior to take me to heaven someday when i die now i thank you dear christ for hearing and answering my prayer and giving to me eternal life everlasting life and i pray this simple little prayer in faith believing, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll trust that many of you came to Christ today. Write us, call us, email us. Let us know. We want to hear from you. Rejoice with you. A little pamphlet we'll send you. Now that you're saved, what next? In your new walk in life with Christ. 
Anything we have on there, CDs, DVDs, all of it, it's free. Absolutely free. Anything to help you in your walk with Christ. So in the meantime, as we go, may the Lord bless you. And may he cause his face to shine upon you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, let's stand to our feet and sing our hymn of invitation. God is speaking to your heart. Of course, the altar is open. We encourage our church to come and pray. Pray for the lost. Pray for our country. Pray for everything. Pray, pray, pray. Come and thank God for the miracles we've seen in the last few weeks in our church. I mean, literally, bona fide miracles. Confirmed miracles. Come and praise and thank God for it. You're looking for a miracle in your own life. Come and pray and ask God. In His grace and His mercy that He would grant it. You need deliverance today. We're here. We're here if you need deliverance today. Need deliverance from drugs, alcohol, sex, sin, immorality, whatever it may be. Bad spirit, ugly, temper, foul mouth, whatever, whatever. You need deliverance today. There's deliverance in the cross of Jesus. That's why he died, to set you free. You feel you're in bondage today. There's freedom in Christ. If you prayed with us just now to receive the Lord, why not come and make it public? We want to rejoice with you and pray with you. Thank the Lord for your decision in Christ today. Whatever it may be, you come. Church, let's fill this place with prayer today. We have so much to pray for. Now remember, one of the big, the biggies we've been asking God for, church. Now we saw God do a lot of things when this whole church got down here on their knees. We saw God move in some miraculous ways. Church, we need rain in this county. We desperately need rain. I know a man that prayed and it stopped raining for three and a half years. That same man played three and a half years later and rain came, Elijah. We need rain. We need to ask God for mercy on him, for mercy that he would grant to us rain. Our crops are drying up, our cattle, our horses need water, our plants, our grass, everything is roasting, brown and crispy, drying up. We need the showers of blessings from heaven. Let us ask God for rain. Whatever it is, let us. Brother David, lead us, and we're done.